Hello, George Romanich here. In last several videos, I talked about pressure, density, temperature, and how these variables change with the altitude in our atmosphere. In all these cases, we talked about atmosphere being in hydrostatic equilibrium. And that means that the vertical component of the pressure radiant force is balanced by gravity. However, please recall that in my video on hydrostatic approximation, I also told you that there are some phenomena in our atmosphere that can have rather significant non-hydrostatic component to their pressure field. Today I would like to try to demonstrate how some of these phenomena look like. In particular, I will try to demonstrate thunderstorm downburst. These phenomena are uh, cold downdrafts of air emerging from thunderstorm, hitting the surface and then, of course, spreading radially in all directions. Velocities in thunderstorms, uh, when they hit the surface and then that air spreads, can be very high. These velocities can sometimes exceed 70 meters per second, which is similar to an EF3 tornado. So gusts can be very, very high. To demonstrate a downburst, I will use a little bit of tap water and dry ice. Dry ice is a solid state of CO2, carbon dioxide, and it's a very cold substance when in a solid form. Temperature is around minus 78, 79 degrees Celsius. And uh, at the room temperature and pressure that I have in my room, duh, that substance directly transitions from a, a solid state into vapor, namely it doesn't melt, and it has to do with the phase diagram of CO2. We don't need to go into these details. You will see now in a few seconds that it directly, so to speak, evaporates from solid state into vapor and a technical term for that transition is called sublimation. So in the rest of this video, I will first show you how dry ice looks like. We will maybe have a little bit of fun with it. And then I will try to demonstrate thunderstorm downburst for you. Let's start. Now let's see the beauty of dry ice. I have a little bit of water here. I take, you shouldn't take it with your hands, but it's okay. Dry ice, isn't this beautiful? How do I convince you it's dry ice? Because this is CO2, it should kill the flame. So if I ignite this, see? There is no oxygen. Also, in my house, the only way to drink whiskey is with dry ice. Oh, look at this beautiful Canadian whiskey over here.
beautiful. I could stare at it all day. Perhaps some of you are now thinking, well, that dry ice is not so cold. You can touch it with your hands. And I can, although I shouldn't, because I'm so tough. Now I would like to demonstrate thunderstorm downburst to you using a little bit of water and dry ice. What I will do, I will put dry ice here and then I will explain how this is to some extent similar to real downbursts that occur in our atmosphere. So I take a little bit of dry ice It's very, very cold. Now, how is this related to downbursts, you might ask? Well, in downbursts, we have cold air from thunderstorm impinging to the surface and then spreading in all directions. And you can already see how this cold air is overflowing hitting the surface and spreading in every possible direction. But it gets even better if we incline it. This is precipitation zone of a thunderstorm and this is cold downdraft impinging towards the surface. Now, if your home is somewhere here and you experience, let's say, thunderstorm is approaching like this. You now understand why you are experiencing those cold, strong winds, because cold air from thunderstorm hits and then spreads radially. If I move this around, then it is simulating a cloud that is uh, moving around producing large-scale downdraft. The beauty of this, we can simulate microburst if I put the lid. You see, now when I put the lid, here the downdraft of is uh, has smaller radius. So this would be a typical example of a microburst hitting on the surface. As you can see, compared to what happened previously, this is actually more vigorous, and usually it is, because the diameter is smaller and quite often the near surface winds are stronger in microbursts compared to, to macrobursts. That's it for today. I hope the last several videos helped you to understand better how pressure, density and temperature change with the altitude in our atmosphere. In today's video we went a little bit further, more advanced, and talked about some non-hydrostatic phenomena. Now you should have very good uh, understanding of pressure field, temperature field and density field in our atmosphere, which is of paramount importance in atmospheric dynamics and thermodynamics. Until next video, goodbye.